Hello physics students, we're going to do a problem that looks at conservation of energy and it's also going to look at conservation of momentum. This is a problem that I think is pretty conceptually easy but it's pretty algebra intensive so I'm going to make sure that I'm going to show a lot of steps here with the algebra. So let's just start with a picture of what's going on here. You have the before picture and then you have the after picture. There's a collision and what we have is we have a racquetball that is initially at rest so V is equal to zero and then there's some sort of racket that's coming in here and it's speeding along this way and we actually know that this is 27 meters per second here and I actually know both the masses too so I know the mass of the racquetball over here is 0 0.032 kilograms and then I know the mass here, I don't really have enough room to write it, but it's written right there. And I call it an effective mass because I want to just think about it as a standalone object. And I don't want to complicate the idea that it's actually connected to somebody's arm. So we're just going to say it has an effective mass of that 0.18 kilograms and that it's really behaving on its own. Now the after picture is going to have this racket that moved through and it's still moving with some velocity here. And then this ball is moving off too with some new velocity. And those are not required to be the same. VB for ball, VR for racket. The masses, of course, are going to stay the same. And so if we just briefly talk about what's going on, we're going to conserve momentum here. Momentum is always, always conserved. This happens to have no momentum initially, P for momentum and it's a vector, don't forget about that. And so all of the momentum of the system is tied up with this particular one, which is mv, and it looks like we could get that number just fine. Since momentum must be conserved, we go over here to the after picture, and whatever number you got out of that, for sake of argument, we're gonna calculate it in a moment, for, but for sake of argument, say it's 10 units of momentum, I need to split 10 units of momentum between these two objects. That's how I could go about conserving it. And if that's all I had to mess with, there's actually infinite solutions. I could have, you know, eight of it over here and two of it over here. This is units of momentum. I could have five here and five here. I could have negative three here. Remember, it's a vector. And this could be a positive 13 here. There are infinite ways to break that up and to actually collectively still have the same amount of momentum. What makes this problem more realistic and more challenging is that we're going to assume that it's a perfectly elastic collision. You don't run across those on this scale in real life, but we're going to make that assumption in this problem, which means that it's essentially a perfect bounce at that racquetball interface. And while I have infinite solutions that can conserve my momentum, as soon as I say that I need to conserve my kinetic energy, it narrows it down to only one possible arrangement. So we will write expressions that conserve kinetic energy and we will write expressions that conserve momentum. And we're going to have to simultaneously solve them so that we can find that one situation where both of these guys are conserved. So I'm going to clear some board space and start my first equation here. I will first write my momentum, my P equation. I could write a PR plus PB goes to PR plus PB for the after. I'm going to skip that step and go straight to the MRVR plus MBVB where this is zero, so that term is going to go away. It's going to be equal to MRVR plus MB. VB. And I'm going to be careful with this generic stuff that I'm doing here. I've used the symbol VR twice and it's not actually the same VR. And so I'm going to put a little a little knot right there too, a zero. That's that initial number. I actually have that. So that variable is going to go away in no time anyways. So if I simplify this down a little bit, and I have everything in base units, and so I'm going to have unit agreement. I'm going to leave out my units when I'm writing a lot of this. I have 0 0.18 kilograms multiplied by 27 meters per second. And then this next term is a zero, so that's going to be equal to 0 0.18, this is for the racket, times 
VR. I don't know what that velocity is after the collision. Picture it. It would probably still be going this way, except it would be probably a little less than 27 meters per second. It's going to slow a touch. Plus 0 0.032, that's the mass of the ball, times VB. It's no longer zero, it's rocketing off. Now in red, I'll write my energy relationship here. So for energy, it's going to be the same sort of thing, except it's a whole bunch of one-half mv squares. So it's going to be a one-half mr vr naught square plus a one-half mb vb square, which is going to go to zero because there's no velocity, is equal to one-half mr vr r squared plus one half m b v b squared. Okay, as I said before, this has gone to zero. You'll notice that every term has a one half in front of it. There's no reason why I need to carry that through. This one's already zero, but it would have been there anyways. So I'm going to multiply everything through by two. This is going to be a 0 0.1827 squared is going to be equal to 0 0.18 VR squared plus 0 0.032 VB squared. So now this is my energy relationship here and this is my momentum relationship. I'm going to clear some board space and rewrite these two equations at the top so we can do some algebra. And the next time you see them, I will have collapsed the left side of these equations into a single number. Okay, so that's quite a bit cleaner looking. Now hopefully you can recognize that what I'm going to do is I just have a two equation to unknown. I'm going to go ahead and solve the blue for one particular variable and substitute it into the red so that I can work with one variable at a time. And in fact, what I'm going to do, this is somewhat arbitrary which one I'm picking, but I'm going to just pick VB is going to be equal to, and then if I do the algebra, it's 4.86 minus 0 0.18 VR over 0 0.032. And now this is a situation where I really do want to probably go ahead and simplify that a little bit more. So let me get this down to just two terms because I'm going to have to square it here in a second. 4.86 divided by 0 0.032 is equal to a 151.9. So now I'm rounding minus a 5.625 VR. So here's a VB, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug that quantity in for VB right there. 131.22 is equal to, so none of this has changed yet, VR squared plus, here's that coefficient, 3, 2, open parentheses, 151.9, minus 5.625 VR. And this is actually a square up there. So let me just work with this right hand term here. 0 0.032 open parentheses. Now I'm going to do my foil where I do the first outsides, insides, last. 2, 3, 0, 7, 4, and then remember the outsides and the insides, those look the same, and so you just have a multiplier of two um, and then the two coefficients. One, seven, zero, nine, a single VR. And then my lasts, it's going to be a positive 31.64 VR squared. So now I got to get this guy in there, distribute on to all of those terms. So I'm at 131.22 equals 0 0.18 VR squared plus 738. That was combining these terms here. Then I'll hold the negative sign, 
This coefficient is now a 54 point, oh, let's go 69 VR. And my last coefficient is now a 1.012 VR squared. Now, I have similar terms here and here. I'm going to combine those terms. And I'm also going to combine these terms so that I can set up a quadratic. So I have 0 equals 1.1925. I know this rounding probably looks funny. I'm holding a few extra digits in my calculator. Minus 54.69 VR plus 606.8. Now I'll use the quadratic. So using the quad, I get two solutions for VR. They are 27.05 or 18.8. This is meters per second. I guess I misspoke at the beginning when I said there's only one possible set of Vs. I guess it depends on how you're looking at it. It is narrowed down for us. You need to think about what's going on, though. Remember, the initial velocity of the racket was 27 meters per second. Then it goes and it collides with the ball. While we have two mathematical solutions for it, this is the only one that makes sense, that it would actually slow down and that the ball would start moving. So make sure you grab the correct solution. just going to rewrite that. The VR is equal to 18.8 .8 meters per second and then I'm going to regain some board space. So I left a few things on the board. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go through and plug that in to right there and see what the other V is. VB is going to be equal to 4.86 minus 0 0.18 18.8 that's meters per second over that many kilograms. And I type this in and I get 46.125 meters per second. Given the amount of algebra that you actually have to do for these problems, I highly recommend that you go back in and plug the numbers into the other equation compared to the one that I just used. So remember this was the conservation of momentum equation. I need to plug in those two V's into the energy one and see if I really did do all my algebra right here. So I'm going to say 131.22 equals, and then we'll have a big old question mark sitting here, 0 0.18, 18.8 squared plus 0 0.032, 46.125 squared. This is 63.6, that's rounded. This one is 68.08, that was a 2 there. And I get that this 131.22 is equal to 131.7. Uh, that is going to be just from all the different steps where I was doing rounding, trying to simplify my equation. So this did actually work for me. So my final answers are right here, that that's the velocity of the ball, and this is the velocity of the racket afterward. A lot of algebra, like I said, conceptually not bad, uh, but hopefully this made sense for you, and if it did, you should let your computer know.